Welcome once again to Model Engineering for Beginners. Working with stainless steel requires a different approach to machining mild steel, as it work hardens and is often difficult to cut. Various grades of this metal are available. I don't know what this type of stainless steel is, as it was bought from a scrapyard 45 years ago. The parts that I'm using are all what are known as chucking pieces, what's left over from an industrial engineering job where all the machining would be done using long lengths of steel. Not big enough to make any more parts from, they're called chucking pieces and are generally put in the scrap bin. This scrapyard that I used to visit frequently many years ago was quite close to a well-known local engineering firm who manufactured Harrison lathes and they used to tip there. Not only did I buy various bits of metal, I also bought quite a lot of tools, reamers, drills, etc. And they were always in quite good condition, I don't know why they threw them away. I still have them and I still use them. All of the drills and reamers were imperial sizes, so maybe Harrison Lathe Works didn't need any more imperial stuff because they went over to metric, I don't know, just a guess. This is a very sharp lathe tool. It's really important when working with stainless steel never to let the tool rub on the work. This will work hard on the metal and make it very difficult to cut. In my time, I've destroyed quite a few twist drills and lathe tools by not cutting stainless steel properly. Always keep a positive pressure on the steel and do not let the tool rub. Take your medication, sit back and relax because it's top tip time. Working with numbers has never been my strong point. My logic is seriously flawed. This has caused me a lot of problems over the years. Here's the tip. This piece of metal doesn't measure any particular length because it's a chucking piece. Purely by chance, when I faced the ends, it ended up at five and three quarters of an inch. So now I need to work out what is half of five and three quarters of an inch. But really, I don't need to know this. All I do is move the steel rule an eighth of an inch in at each end. That way, when I scribe a line at the three inch point, it's in the middle, and it's near enough for rock and roll. This is not a precision part, it's just going to be strong. It's a seat belt support for my Land Rover. The line you can see on the work is not a line, it's a saw cut. This was done on my metal cutting bandsaw, and all it did was destroy the blade. Mind you, it was blunt to start with. Then I had a brainwave. Why not cut this on my small Burgess bandsaw using the standard blade, which is quarter of an inch? It started off okay and the results were encouraging, but bear in mind I have to put constant pressure on this because, as I've already mentioned, stainless steel work hardens very easily. It was all going quite well. I hadn't got very far, but then the bandsaw blade fell off the pulleys. Right, I'm going to stop being silly and pretend that I can cut this thickness of stainless steel on a very small bandsaw. I'm going to use the very small parting tool, which I normally use in the tool post of the Boxford lathe, which is basically the same size as the one on the Smart and Brown. It's slightly different, it's not quite as big. You may be wondering why I'm doing it this way. Why don't I use a big parting tool and put lots of pressure on? The answer is simple. A few years ago, I used to have a large parting tool for this Spartan Brown lathe, and I was using it one day, and the work locked up, and it absolutely broke the tool holder. Beyond repair, I just put it in the bin. I do quite a lot of parting off in the Boxford lathe, and I have a couple of parting tools, a very thin one, and one a little bit thicker. This is the one that is a little bit thicker, but it looks very small against the Smart and Brown. I've used this small parting tool for many jobs, such as grooving pistons, etc. And now the blade is so short, it's only held in by the end bolt. And what's even more puzzling is, it works very well like this. The only trouble is I can't get too close to the work, so we'll not be able to get all the way through this. I got as far as I could, and then I removed the part from the chuck. And once again, it's over to the old bandsaw. This is one of the two Burgess bandsaws that I have. 
The first thing to do when working on the machine is unplug it from the mains and check that it is definitely unplugged from the mains by moving the switch back and forth, as you've just seen me do. Fitting a bandsaw blade with power going to the machine is not a smart idea. Once I fitted the blade, I turned the power on at the main switch, then started the cutting job. Luckily, I don't have to cut very far this time. Just enough to separate the parts, which wasn't much, and here they are sat side by side on the bandsaw table. If my parting tool had have been a bit longer, I could have parted these off cleanly in the lathe. But there wasn't much to go, and it was a simple job to turn away the excess and then face across the front. I need to make both of these parts approximately the same size. What you're looking at, or what you'll be looking at shortly, is not the end product. These are still too big, and they're also possibly going to be too long, I'm not sure, until the bolts arrive. I used a half-inch reamer to check that the holes were the right size, and they are. This is the other cut end, and you can see the marks where the blade was up against the main work. For some reason, when I pulled the tool backwards, it gave a terrible finish, but it doesn't matter because, as I mentioned a moment ago, this is not the final size. Once more through with the reamer, clean the sharp edges off with the file, and I'm ready to go. I didn't want too much of a discrepancy, so I took the time to make sure that both of these parts were the same length. And here on the bench, you can see that they are not perfect, but they are the same length. In the next episode of Model Engineering for Beginners, I will show how I turn these parts using a mandrel. This is what they are for, and these are the ones I already made that weren't tall enough. Seat belt supports for my Land Rover. These, of course, are miles too big, as you can see, so I need to turn them down, but not all the way. I want to leave the base quite wide for extra strength. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.